What's up, guys? I'm Michaela, and I wrote a book report on a book I've never read today. And this is the Schmodown reaction. I'm going to be watching the number one contender match, I believe it is. Um, it's between Above the Line and Modoc, who I love both teams. I think that Modoc is entertaining to watch because not only are they fun to watch, like, okay, not as fun as the Wild Berries, but pretty fun. Like, charismatically, they're very good. But they also know answers, which I can't say the same for the Wild Berries, even though they just won. Proud of the Wild Berries, you my homies. But, um, Modoc is fun to watch, so I'm excited about that. But above the line, of course, Sam and Drew are the great, probably, probably the greatest team I see play. Even though they lost to the Patriots, I still think that they're better than the Patriots. Um, I'm going to try something different today and switch it up. So I'm going to have my picture on the screen and then, let me see if I can get this right, then have the Schmodown picture right here. Oh, we're going to give that a go. See if that makes a difference for my own personal view because no one watches these. But maybe one day, maybe one day people will watch me. Um, my prediction, I have to say, I think Above the Line's going to win. They're too great. They can't be stopped. And also based on the pre-interviews, which are cut from the video, so you need to go watch the match itself so you can see it. I love Rachel Cushing. And she's so fantastic. And I love Clark Wolf. And I think that if there was anyone who I think should have the belt, or I would like to see have the belt in the singles competition, it would be Clark Wolf. And I could not think of anyone who I want to have it more than her. Um, the only competition would be Rachel Cushing. But I think that if anyone were to take the belt from Clark, it would be Rachel. And I'd be okay with it, because they're both great. There's one more thing I wanted to say... Oh, I realized that Jeff the Inn Snyder Snyder sounds really stupid. And that's all I have to say about that. Alright, let's watch the match. Oh, yes! Now let's get ready to smoke it! Look it up here. Are you ready to go? Are you ready to go? Oh, yes! Then let's get ready to Schmodan! <laughs> the floor is yours, good sir. Here you go. Three rounds to a finish. Introducing first. With a record of five wins and three defeats, they are the 2015 Ultimate Schmodown semifinalists and the number two contenders, the Kahuna, Matt Achity, and Gray, the great, they have good great team Schmodown! Oh, wait, that. Great Scott! Matt Achity as Marty McFly. Great as they be fuddled. Uh, Great drink is so funny. So I've watched her since I like that. this mode started. I don't started. think he actually had to go buy that outfit. I think, no. I think he's had it. I think Anthony, he's had it there. Oh, and Zach, can we hear a little bit of your Marty McFly and your Doc Brown? Maddie, give it to him! I don't know, Doc. This is heavy. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. I, I give that a solid 8 out of 10, and I would take both of them to the fish under the sea dance. Absolutely. And their challengers, Excuse I guess, me, that's the favorites. Enchantment the under the sea. Enchantment Very good. Under One the point sea. for action. Well, thank you. Seen it. Thank you. Good they news. Seen it. Don't have sex with your mom. <laughs> and their opponents, <laughs> with a record of four wins and one defeat, 
They are the 2017 Baby Faces of the Year, the 2017 Rookie Team of the Year, and the 2017 Ultimate Schmodown winners, the Godfather, Drew McWeenie, and the Rady Movie Trivia Schmodown Singles Champion of the World, the glorious one, Sam here in their customary suits, blazers, jackets. They've come kind of low profile. I they're, wonder what that means. They, they're in downright hoodies. I mean, this is casual wear for them. Is there a reason why we're getting the hoodies and not the full dress up for a bubble? We'll, we'll suit up when we get our title shot. Yeah. We're, uh, okay. Okay, well. we're, we're back in Rocky Three training mode right now. There you go. It is a title shot that is on the line here today. And your rules in round one competitors, particularly you, Mr. Atchity, are as follows. In round one, you're going to hear eight questions from eight different movie categories. Each question is worth one point. There's no penalty for missing a question. There is no stealing in round one. Once you hear the question, please write down your best attempt at an answer on the whiteboard in front of you. You have around 15 seconds to write down your answer. Once we say pens down, please stop writing. When we ask you individually to show us your answer, please show the whiteboard to our cameras. At the same time, you verbalize it into the microphone presented in front of you, plugged in courtesy of our friends at Radio Shack. Keep in mind, you do have JTE rules. Three of them are able to be used. That is, if you need to hear a question again, or you just want to stall for some time, ask us to repeat the question. Each team also has one challenge, should you feel a question so was answered inaccurately, in or anything goes down that you want reviewed. Because that looks Hoda, incredible. are you ready to play? I never noticed that. that. <laughs> yes. All right. They're ready to go in any decade we see fit, whether it's 55, 85, or 2015, or the Old West. Above the line, are you ready to go? Absolutely. I just want to uh, thank the good people over at Nickelodeon's Mutton Stuff for providing me <laughs> with this wonderful hoodie. Uh, it's a fine children's program, and I was honored to be on it. Yes, we are ready. With God is my witness, I thought you said muffin stuff. <laughs> All I right. said children's program. <laughs> children's. It just gets dirty and dirtier. Sam Levine, of course, from the hit show, Even Stevens. Let's get ready <laughs> to schmo down. It's time to schmo down. There we go. Ken Knapsack will be administering the first question. Ken, what's our category opening up today? All right. First of eight questions comes in the category of animated. Animated. Always start with Which animated. Which 2002 Disney film is a science fiction adaptation of a classic Robert Louis Stevenson novel and features the voice talents? of Joseph Gordon-Levitt, Emma Thompson, and Martin Short. The legendary Martin Short, one of my heroes. One of the, would you say the best? I'm not uh, sure, so I'm trying to think of a film with all three of their uh, voices. Charles Grodin. Voices. Charles Grodin is that. Wow. Yeah. Five, four, three. Science Robin Williams, two. Don Rickles, animated. one. Bob uh, Newhart, Treasure and Planet. Hands down. Matt Atchity, you're up first. Treasure Planet. Give him a point. Uh, I, mean, treasure I didn't know. That's I correct. haven't seen that. Yeah, I guessed it. Titan A. Uh. <laughs> Doc Brown is incorrect. In what 1999, I that? auditioned thrice for this movie, <laughs> Treasure Planet. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> oh, boy. You can't win them all, Sam. But maybe you can win here today and get some measure of revenge on Mr. Lewis Stevenson. Your next question comes from the world of comedies. These are movies that are funny. What actress played a sexually aggressive dentist in the comedy Horrible Bosses. Jennifer Aniston. Ken Knapp's like the worst uh, boss you've ever had. Let's take the last, I don't know, 10 years of your life out oh, of the equation. Oh, uh, myself, currently freelance. <laughs> You're not good with taxes. Five, four, three, two, and one. Looking for answers, starting with Drew. Uh, that would be Jennifer Aniston. That is correct. Gray. Always team Jennifer Aniston. She's correct, Sam. Co-written by my dear friend Jonathan Francis Daly. That would be Jennifer <laughs> Aniston. Uh, and Jennifer Aniston. That is correct. 4-3 ball game. 4-3 ball game. Ken, I've never seen more booze for someone who just wants to let everybody know he's well-liked in Hollywood. <laughs> I have a lot of very successful friends. <laughs> and a Canadian girlfriend. Uh, <laughs> we don't talk about her. <laughs> Question three comes to the category of 80s movies. 80s movies. Who Wait, plays what? Detective Billy Rosewood in the 1984 movie Beverly Hills Cop? 
have no idea. Maybe, uh, maybe my, my favorite uh, movie with the Will Smith. Cop in it. Although I did like Let's Be Cops famously. Five. Nobody else did. Four. Except three. Josh Bakuga. Two the only one. and one. He doesn't count. Look, for answer started with Gray Drake. I just erased my answer. I didn't have time to rewrite it. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, That's a no. Uh, Sam. Send in the Judge Reinhold. That's right. Matt Atchley. I rewrote and got Judge Rein. I didn't get the hold. Mm, okay. We can't, can't accept give you a that. point. Can't accept yeah. that. Can't accept that. Can't Need accept a hold. That. Uh, really? Yeah. Need a, needed a hold. Sorry. Needed a hold. Need a hold. Sorry. Uh, Judge Reinhold. Then I'll write oh. four above the line. So it is 6 3. Some fumbles there. <laughs> See if that point is going to cost Moda. Here in the long run. Yeah, yeah, we'll see. Just ask John Rocco about that whiteboard. All right, your next uh, category is in the world of horror thrillers. Horror thrillers, and your question is: What is the name of the club the group of friends call themselves the club. in the 2017 hit movie It? Hmm. Wouldn't know that answer. I haven't. Uh, still scared of the movie. Still, still scared still. of the movie. I heard you recently it's saw. It's not um, scary. Right? It's more of a yeah, thriller. About a, about a month and a half it's after it really came out, not I quite enjoyed it. Yeah. Isn't it. Really good movie. Yeah. Good villain. Five, villain. four, three, one of the two, best. and one. Pence down. We go to the well liked and Hollywood Sam Levine. The answer is Jane Fonda. <laughs> <laughs> a great reference, but we cannot I run a point for that. Sorry, that is uh, it clearly said. not quite He's legible quite the enough. Actor. He's making the exact job of the best man. The Losers Club. It is the Losers Club for one point for the Queen. That would be the Losers Club. That is correct. Sam right. Levine. The Losers Club. All right, so... Uh, they're, Should they're, I challenge that? It clear... <laughs> Fine, I'll let it go. Modoc, hang it in there. Are you calling Jane Fonda a loser, my friend? Modoc, <laughs> hang it in there. Yes, uh, and I will agree with Matt Atchity. Even if he had written it legibly, Jane Fonda was not the name of the club that the group of friends <laughs> called themselves in the movie It. It was a bad joke. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right, question five. Question five comes in the category of action adventure. Action adventure. Aaron Paul stars in which 2014 racing film? Need for Speed. Uh, how many speeding tickets? I'm trying to think got? of what racing oh, film boy. came out uh, in 2014, and I think it was Need five for years. Speed. Zero uh, for me. I rectified my driving ability in the last five years. Uh, five. One of those uh, four. Saw in the three, Paul moments. Two. One looking for answers, starting with Matt Atchley. Need for speed. I yeah. did speed yeah. rhyme, so I get extra points. Very right? fast I like answer. It. Need for speed. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Eight. I forgot the name of it, so I said driving like a boss. I mean, he was, but wrong. <laughs> Sam. I got the need, the need for speed. That is correct. All right. Loading so. Top Gun, getting the answer right with need of speed. And Nine, we have six. a three-point game has been opened up here with above the line in the lead as we move on to our sixth question in round one that is in the world of family films the whole family can find these mildly amusing your question is who portrayed george in the 1997 live action adaptation oh my God. of george of the jungle Famous Rob, actor, why don't I that, know his name? Have determined oh my themselves gosh. that it's easy. Uh, George in a fight against Tarzan. He's in Man vs. Oh, Nature, too. Uh, five. The, four. The mummy. Oh my god. Two and one. Look for answers. Start with Drew. Uh, that would be Brendan Fraser. That is correct for uh, 10 points. Uh, Greg. Brendan is Fraser. It Brendan Fraser. That is correct. Sam's with Razor. Brendan Fraser. <laughs> That's right. Brendan Fraser. All right, clean sweep across the board for everyone there. Maybe I'm entirely the eighth above the line. Seventh question, seventh question in the category of fantasy sci-fi. A young man must stop the Lord of Darkness from both destroying daylight and marrying the woman he loves in what 80s fantasy I film? Imagine. Man, you think destroying daylight would have been enough. Yeah, it, and if, then on top of it, taking away his lady. Yeah, Come on. If they didn't say 80s, yeah, I would have answered that. That's the name, Brendan Fraser. <laughs> that's a five. I don't know why four, that didn't three, ring a bell. Two and stuff. one pens down. Look for answers starting Picture with Ray. I panicked. Uh, Labyrinth? Uh, nope, nope, nope. You remind me of the man. What man? Not the right answer, Sam. I made the same mistake. Wow. Okay. Oh, uh, oh who Tom also Cruise. has successful friends in Hollywood? Maybe it's Doc <laughs> Brown. <laughs> that actually, I'm going to say the movie that gave us Tom Cruise in armor with no pants. That's legend. That's right. Legend indeed. That's what true. I was thinking of. Legend. Hey, that is correct. Okay. Still in. All right. Final one of this round. Right. Contest. Our last question in round one is a Patreon question. This comes from a loyal patron of the Schmodown. 
The young person's name is Abdullah Al Shirawi. Thank you, Abdullah, for supporting the show. And in the category that you wanted the question in, movie release dates. <gasps> I'm a big Check fan of yours. Down Patreon and big, enjoy big the really tears. This could things. be you one day. 12 to 9 here, close round. But Sam's I'm not exactly great. And Abdullah asks, the following three comic book films all came out in 2008. You need to list them in the order that they were released. Okay. From earliest um, to latest. I rescind my being a big fan terrible. of this guy. <laughs> the movies um, are The Dark Knight, Iron Man, and the Incredible I think it Hulk. went Iron Man, The Dark Knight, you Incredible time to write down Hulk. These answers. Again, you need to get them in the order that they were released. So I'm pretty sure Iron Man came out before The Incredible Hulk. In the year of 2008. 2008. What was your cholesterol count? But I don't know where The Dark Knight uh, falls in. Four or five. Mine was abnormally high. I was. Around there. I have good cholesterol. Ten years I have, old. I have bad cholesterol. <laughs> I got all the good ones. I got the upside. You got the downside. All right. Um, we're gonna give them a little bit. Or maybe more the Incredible Hulk came out first. No, I think it came. Oh. Five, I'm gonna go Iron Man, four, Dark Knight, Incredible three, Hulk. Up, two, That's so tough. And screw one. you, Patreon. And we're gonna go pens down. Yeah. Pens down. Yeah. Pens yeah. down. Yeah. And yeah. down. Yeah. We're and starting with the Okay. One is Hulk. Two is Iron Man. Three is Dark Knight. That is uh, incorrect. Yeah, correct. Actually. Matt Ash. Iron Man, Dark Knight, Incredible Hulk. Incorrect. incorrect. No, true. It's way. Iron Man, the Incredible Hulk, the Dark Knight. That's correct. Yeah. That's the boy. Yeah. Great drink. Uh, nope, she got it wrong too as well. She got it wrong too. It's a tough, well, great question, yeah. Abdullah. Thank you for supporting so Iron the Patreon. Man, uh, only one Hulk, person getting Dark that, Knight. and it gives above the line a little bit more of a cushion going yeah. into round two. It's right. now thirteen to nine, four point lead for a ATL. Tough. Best that teammate I've ever had. Right. Was that well, the eighth question? <laughs> that is the eighth and final that question. That would be a perfect round for Drew, I believe. Woo. Oh, nice. It is a perfect round for Drew McQueenie. Thank you to Sam Levine for knowing that. Oh, yeah, Probably I wasn't going to forget that. One of his highfalutin <laughs> friends at some fancy Highwood Hills party like told Sam Drew Levine that he just told us. So now round. Drew McQueenie is going to get a question asked just to Drew because he got a perfect round one. Your bonus question, sir, is what 1998 comedy takes place at a graduation party and starred Jennifer Love Hewitt, Ethan Embry, Seth Green, and Lauren Ambrose. Can't hardly wait. That's, That's one correct. point. That's correct. And now it's Never a five-point lead. Right. Going into round two, the perfect round pays Can, off for Drew McKinney. Damn it, I Can love we this give man. him an extra bonus point if he names the, the band that wrote that song and sang that song? No? <laughs> yeah, I can. No. That would be Love Burger. <laughs> no replacements. <laughs> Paul Westerberg, Looking all right. For the Sorry, I win this round of music trivia. And will above <laughs> the line be the replacements for Team Patriots at the top of the heap? Well, they can win this match, and then they will face the Patriots, but still have two more rounds to go with Modoc biting at their heels. In round two, it is known as the wheel round. Oh, yeah. The rules in round two are as follows. Each team is going to get six questions from one of the categories on the Wheel of Destiny. You spin the wheel. If you don't like the category you get, you are allowed one mulligan spin. If you don't like that category, too bad. That's what you're stuck with. Six questions. Each question is worth two points. There again, there's no penalty for missing a question. However, stealing is available in round two. If you're not sure of the answer, you can ask us for multiple choice, which point we'll give you four selections, one of which is the correct answer. Then the value of the question goes down to one point. Remember your JTE rules, remember your challenges, and remember the Titans. One of those slices is a sponsored Patreon slice from one of our patron supporters, and that is the slice of classics. Somebody wanted classics me, Ellis, piece of on shit. the wheel. <laughs> they want to see them get classics, and we have a classic game in the works here, Ken. <laughs> so we go to round two. Above the line, you are in the lead 14 to 9. You have the first spin of the wheel if you want it, or you can defer to Modoc. Uh, we will defer. Modoc, you're up. Who would you like to have spin? First here. All right. Well, Sometimes I like that. You, you, there's different ways of putting the pressure on your opponent. Get if it, Matty! They don't have a good round two. Oh, All of a sudden, above the line Narrow is just chilling in a hammock with a margarita. I love that they always. Round one streep. They're begging for streep. They're not going to get it. It could be opponent's so choice, Ken. That is. Do you want to keep that slice? Matt Ashley and Greg they've seen a lot of movies. Yeah, I A lot know. of classic movies coming their way. Is that what they want? I think they could do it, but I think they're, they should. All right, they're going to go again. They're going to go again. They're not going to come up with it. Slice. You have to if do it sometimes like, what your yeah, opponent feels comfortable with or your team feels comfortable with. 
Uh, they, but again, they could spin classics now, then they're going to be stuck with it, Ken. And spin. the wheel could be going oh. that way. We might have classics again, Ken. Oh, oh, no. Boom! It just limped over there, and I'm happy to say that Scott Curtis is Jenner our wants. patron. Scott Curtis is the member of the Schmodown Patreon <laughs> that wanted that slice on the wheel. I'm not sure if Scott was hoping Modoc gets it. Modoc was hoping they didn't get it. They ended up spinning it, Ken, and you have those questions for them right now. I do, I do. You're going to get six questions in this round from this category. For everybody counting at home, that's four more questions, and Ken currently has Butterfingers available on our desk. I asked for four. I only got two. <laughs> you can't always get what you want. All right. Try sometimes, you get the diabetes. You Butterfingers sound right. so good. Great, Scott, Ken. That's a lot of Butterfingers. <laughs> First question. Don't make it heavy. Who directed the following <laughs> classic films? The Philadelphia Story, A Star is Born, and My Fair Lady. I couldn't even, uh, I don't know, Kubrick. I have no idea. Yeah, we're going to uh, need to uh, do a count in. Five, four, three. We're going to go with George Cukor. That's correct for two points. George Cukor, the famed director. They got it right. They're within a point. Uh, excuse right. me. They're within three points of above the line. Absolutely. All right. Your second question in this round is, which Akira Kurosawa film predominantly follows two peasants on an adventure? That would be Hidden Fortress. That's correct. Matt Atchity. Or is also that one. Also known as Star Wars Episode 3.5. <laughs> Third question out of six. Terrible. In White Christmas, who sings If You're Worried and You Can't Sleep, Count Your Blessings King Instead of Sheep? I love that movie. I've seen it probably. No, I've seen it exactly once, but I love it. We get uh, multiple choice books. Yes, you may. A, Bing Crosby. <laughs> B, Danny K. C, Fred Astaire. D, Bob Hope. Danny K. That's incorrect. Chance for a steal from Bing Bob Hope. Uh, we repeat okay. the choices, please? Uh, yes. Above the line, just waking up in round two. A, Bing Crosby. B, Danny K. C, Fred Astaire. D, Bob Hope. Let's go with A. Bing Crosby is correct. That's one point on a steal. Oh, he was dreaming of a white Christmas, Ken, and above the That's line now a has a two-point gap. Plenty of questions left for Modoc in round two. All right, this will be your fourth in this round. Who played Victor Laszlo in 1943's Casablanca? He should say the husband part. Maddie speaks for me. Go ahead. All right, we need an answer. <laughs> yeah. Peter Lorre. That is incorrect, incorrect. Bubble on for steel. I've never seen it. I should, though. Paul Heinrichs? That is incorrect. Uh, Paul Henreid. Oh. oh, okay. Paul Henreid, he was not a guitar wielding Roka enthusiast. Roka is furious right now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Fifth question in this round. Fifth question. How many times did Claude Rains play the role of Jack Griffin, the Invisible Man? Two. It's a number, so it'd be stupid to go multiple choice. Gonna need an answer? Uh, I'm gonna say um, three. That is incorrect for the steal above the line. We need an answer in five. Four. We'll go with twice. That is incorrect only once. Ooh, oh, only once. Tricky. Bit of a, uh, Tom Forey, trick question he by is, the Slowdown uh, Riders. I, 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 uh, clarification, he played two more times, just no one saw him. Okay. Let's see what he did there. Can we give no him a half a point for this? Trying to get. That's pretty funny. I might add that in in pencil and paper later. All right. Your final <laughs> question oh, in this uh, round of classics. Final brilliant. question. The it. song Moon River was written for what Audrey Hepburn movie? Breakfast at Tiffany. That's right. And he I said, said, what about breakfast at Tiffany? She said, I think I oh, remember the film. I, yes, I, I recall. Think I recall. Okay. Guys, we don't have the rights. The <laughs> <laughs> Definitely don't have the rights. <laughs> We're going to move on again. Don't have the rights. Round 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 two. Two. Uh, I, I would love, I would pay so much money to see a Schmodown musical. Let's make it happen. Because Mark Ellis, Ken Knapsack, you just nailed Every note. I love it. I applaud thee. 
Yeah. <laughs> it is a tied ball game. Is that correct? 15-15. Uh, oh. We move on in round two here and above the line. Well, you know, Modoc, they got some questions right above the line with enough of a steal to at least maintain a tie. They have a spin mm. left. Which member of your team would enjoy spinning the Wheel of Fate? The man with the magic arm, Mr. Drew McQueenie. <laughs> Drew McQueenie confidently strolls up. Right. It's a good one. To the wheel. All the All brashness and boldness in the world categories. at his fingertips. That is a good Nobody spin. spins it like you, Drew. Nobody. Powerful Woo! spin. The spin is Nobody in. The spin is spins. in. It's like Ernie Ellis. He can't even see how hard he's working to That's spin right. that. It's just a just a warm maple syrupy like kind a, of spin that Drew McQueen Will has. Will Clark's swing in 1989. Mm, Effortless. Mm, mm. Butter. Exciting. And it's going to land. 80s. On 1980s. They're keeping it, Ken. Did I say the man had a golden arm? Or did I say the man had a golden arm? Who's coming to Vegas with me? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Drew Can we get a mulligan on their spin? <laughs> <laughs> you cannot, unfortunately, use your mulligan on an opponent's spin. A That'd nice, be, clever usage of the rules. Matt be Ashley has been watching weird. the Schmodowns. However, it is 80s movies for Above the Line, a category they're very excited about. Your first question of six. If you don't use your own what mulligan. What was the first movie to pair theirs? Tom Hanks and Sally Field as co-stars? That would be Punchline. They right, got the close. movie that is so accurate to the real world of stand-up comedy. <laughs> John Goodman is the stay-at-home husband who just hates it. His wife gets out at and night. A young DJ Tanner, Candace Cameron, plays Hallie Field's daughter. And we move on with no additional <laughs> points awarded. <laughs> Two-point no lead in your next question in round two, the world of 80s movies. In 1983's A Christmas Story, what is the major award that the dad receives? <laughs> Yeah, it's the yeah. Board, right? the plug-in leg lamp. That's correct. Yeah. Give, yeah. Him oh. Give him two points. Give him two points, and I think that, that one really hurt Modoc. I think they knew it's that Italian. answer as well. Could have been a steal. For Gila. Italian. Yeah. For Gila. Italian. All right, so now we move on to your third question. I didn't remember in that being the award, but, films. Who yeah. plays Ariel's best friend, Rusty, in 1984's Footloose? All these old movies, man. I couldn't tell you. Some people in the crowd were acting. I need to see more. I know. Something you know offhand? I don't know. Just want to dance. Go to five, four, three. Can you repeat the question? Certainly can do that. There, the first JT rule. Who plays Ariel's best friend, Rusty, in 1984's Footloose? It's got multiple choice. It's not like you are like neck and neck. And once again, we'll go to our. I'm going to say Chris Ben. That is incorrect for Steel Modoc. Two-point swing here, Ken. This could be huge. Could be very big. Do you need an answer in five? Can we get multiple choice? Cannot. Four. You, you Wait, cannot. Three, go ahead. Three, two. Go ahead. What do you mean? Go one. Uh, Kevin Bacon. That is incorrect. Yeah. Looking for Sarah Jessica Parker. It was really? Sarah right. Jessica Parker. Yeah. That was a, a <laughs> big miss for uh, I, I above the line because they are putting the pressure on the neck of Modoc here, uh, but they have more in this round. And a big miss for Modoc as well. Could have really yeah. closed things up here. But we still Enough have three with the guilt trip, Ellis. Come on. <laughs> Your next question in the world of 1980s Stay and talk to my wife for that. In Blade Runner. Which replicant does Deckard retire first? We're looking for the name. I have no idea. The first name of the replicant. Leon. Is incorrect. incorrect. We go to Modoc. For the steal. No. They don't use multiple choice look at all. Dancer. The dancer one. What I don't remember need, her name though. Can name. we get multiple choice? No, you certainly can't. cannot. Alice. Five. <laughs> Four, right. Vera, three, Alicia. You need a final answer. Gray Drake. It's not Pris. Can, can I answer it without the uh, without getting points? Sure, sure. Zora. There That's you go. Correct, God, but no points. Zora. Zora. All right. Damn it. All you right. are right, Matt Ashley. <laughs> no points more. are awarded. No. It is now a four-point game, and it's we have two questions left. This. If Modak happened to steal these, we'd be tied to the end. Yeah. Or above the line could really put the heat on for a technical knockout if we get to round three, which we will. Your question: What '80s crime comedy? Stars John Candy, Eugene Levy, Robert Loja, and Meg Ryan. That would be Armed and Dangerous. Two points for above the line. Two points. Ouch. I love that movie. That, but I love now John Candy a and six point Meg Ryan. And literally one and a half members of our crowd pulling for above the line. Seems like Modoc is one <laughs> favor, but with only one question left in round two, their, stand, their chances to steal dwindling. Your last question in round two. Which actor 
played Sean Astin's brother, Brand, in The Goonies. I don't know a single actor's uh, name in that movie. Would that be Josh Brolin? Oh, that's it would be boys. Josh <laughs> Brolin, <laughs> and it would be an eight-point lead going Ooh. into round three, so above the line. Ooh. Drew McQueeny, uh, Sam Levine dubbed him the man with a golden arm. He certainly spun that with the category of 80s. They did very well. But Modoc, they have a puncher's chance here. They're yeah. going to be answering their slate of questions uh, predominantly first as we get to round three. Round Absolutely. three. Each team is going to give us a series of three numbers. They range from 1 to 20. They're going to correspond to three different movie categories up here. Your first question is going to be worth two points. Your next question is worth three points. The last question you receive is worth five points. Keep in mind, for the two-pointer and the three-pointer, the teams must choose which member is going to answer them. You have to answer those ones on your own. You cannot consult your teammate for help. Once you get to the five-pointer, you are allowed to collaborate. Because above the line is in a commanding eight-point lead, we're going to get your series of numbers first. Which do you like? Ten, two, and twelve. Good Ten, numbers. Two and twelve. No. Okay. So, we need. Nobody uh, says numbers like Drew. Three numbers that are not <laughs> ten, two, and twelve. Modoc. Eleven, three, and thirteen. Oh. Playing head games. Oh. Did, you, ju right did you just IBM? He Hal just IBM held us. I was thinking. Oh my God. God. He <laughs> IBM held us, guys. That's not cool. <laughs> All right. Right. All right. Ken Knapsack will be administering now. the questions to Modoc, and uh, they need to dig themselves out of a hole here, Ken. All right. The category will be Disney. Who will be answering this two point question? What about Disney? Who's going to answer the two point question? <laughs> Me. I was going to say, Ray Drake. Ray right. Drake will be answering the question. She cannot confer with Matt Atchity. Your two point question What Disney animated movie features the Billy Joel song, Why Should I Worry? Oliver and Company. Wow, two wow. points! Oh, yeah. Two That's points kind of there. You know, I know she's dressed like Doc Brown, but Great Drake looks like any frazzled professor in any Disney movie I've ever seen. Right. All right. For your second question, which is a three pointer, you chose the number three. That corresponds to the category of fantasy sci fi, Matt. I hate these. Name the corporation that manufactures replicants in Blade Runner. They do need to hit this, Ken. They do need yes. to hit this. Max yes. Does not get this right. And I, the, repeat the question, please. All right, using your first JT rule. Oh, Name the corporation that manufactures oh. replicants in Blade Runner. We're talking about the first movie. Yeah. Uh, Well, Gray knows it too. That's right. Basically. I want to say Wayland Yutani, and that's not it. It's uh, looking for a final answer. Hit. Five, four, three, Damn. two, one. I've lost it. No answer. So, with that, we have a I have no winner idea. by Wayland The Tyrell Corporation was what we were looking for. Tyrell Corporation is what we were looking for. Tyrell Corporation. All right. So, my score, if I were above the line, I would have gotten nine points, which is less than half of their score. If I were Modoc, I would have gotten ten. So, I would have done better there. But, alas. Here we are, and I'm not under the light. Well, those lights. I am under some lights, but not those lights. I think it was a good match, you know, even though it was a TKO. They were tough questions. Um, and I don't know who they could take on next, as in MODOK, maybe... Um, I think Modoc and the Shire Wolves would be a good one. Just to kind of bring the Shire Wolves into it, because we all know how great they are. Above the line, of course, should beat the Patriots. I would love to see that happen. I would love to see Modoc beat the Patriots. But, oh, uh, I would love to see anyone, literally anyone, beat the Patriots. The Kingsmen beat them. That'd be great. That'd be wild, because the Kingsmen are not that good. I mean, they're better than me, but still. Um, I think that's all I have for you. I'm going to watch the post interviews now. So make sure you check out the link in the description for the full match, including the...
pre and post interviews. Oh my gosh. Guys, this is wild. So my fish, he's been sick lately. So to cheer him up, I bought him a hammock, a leaf hammock. And it was a leaf this big that came in a giant box this big. But it's just a little leaf. And it's been in his tank for two weeks now. And he hasn't gone on that half of the tank at all. And now he's laying in the hammock. And I'm so thrilled. His name is Robin Hood. He's a great fish. And I'm thinking of doing a segment where Robin Hood puts his input into my movie reviews. Which I need to do. I am very behind on my movie reviews. So we will probably do them tonight. And I slipped into this accent and I like it very much. So I'm going to keep it. Bye guys, have a great day. When 900 years old you reach, look as good you or not. Hmm? <laughs>